It was a lot of believing and really understanding that we do create our own destiny and we can create our life's path and it's up to us to take that inspired action. And you know, that's like the piece of manifesting that yeah. I think a lot of people get confused about. It's not just wishing for something to happen. It's actually showing up and doing it. This is your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode number 336 with guest Kara alwill Leba. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen. A no BS guide to self help and badassery. Because, ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host, the girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, Ask Kickers. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am so glad that you're here. And I don't think that there's been any other time like the present where I have so wished that we could all gather in person so I could give you all a hug, obviously with consent, because I know not everybody's a hugger. But I don't know about you. I'm recording this towards the end of April and this whole stay-at-home stuff is is really kind of getting to me. And I know that I'm so incredibly lucky to be able to stay at home. I know a lot of you still have to go to work, whether you work in the medical field or you are a delivery person or you work in the grocery business or whatever it is that you still have to go to work. And so I'm thinking of all of you. I'm thinking of those of you who are trying to do this homeschool thing. I'm thinking of those of you who live alone or having are having to help a aging parent. There's the list goes on and on of all of the struggles that so many of you I know are facing right now. And I am thinking of you, wishing I could hug you and sending you so much love right now. Today, we have a long overdue guest, and I'm going to tell you about her in just a minute, but I have two announcements that might interest you. The first one is, I need y'all's stories. I talked about this briefly uh, on the podcast, I don't remember, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, and I got... Um, exactly one person to fill it out. Thank you to the one person who filled it out. But if you've read my books before, you know, especially in How to Stop Feeling Like Shit, there were stories from your kick-ass life community, you listening to this podcast. And, you know, there were generous women who told me their stories and let me publish it as an example for others in the book. And I need more stories because I'm writing another book. So let me just kind of tell you right now what I am working on and the stories I would love to have and publish in the book. And if you're like freaking out right now, don't worry. I will use a different name. I never use last names for these stories. But if you want me to use a different first name, I can I can for sure do that. So the first question is around feelings. How do you know you don't feel your feelings? kind of like that. I'm not going to read the entire question. I'm going to let you go to the page to finish reading the question. Another one is that it's about numbing. You know that I talk about this a lot. I'm I'm taking a different angle with this next book. I'm talking about, quote unquote, taking the edge off. That's another question. Uh, Another one is I would love examples around Asking for what you want. If you struggle with that, if you struggle with asking for support, if you struggle with asking for a promotion or time off at work or more help around the house, whatever it is, I would love for you to fill out that section of the questionnaire. And then the last one is around money. Is money complicated for you? Yourkickasslife.com slash story. You don't have to answer all the questions. If just one of them is something where you're like, oh my gosh, that's me. I really struggle in that area. I would love your story or anecdote, just an example of how you find that area of your life challenging. And again, if you don't want to fill them all out, just do the one. If you struggle in all of those areas, then I'd be happy to to read them. Can't guarantee that it's going to be in the book. All of the details about that whole thing are on that page, yourkickasslife.com slash story. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. You help make these books possible for me. So thank you. All right, next announcement is that if you are in a place right now where you could really use some support, We have some spots open for one-on-one coaching and consulting right now. So you can work with me personally. I have one spot open for my bigger 
more transformational, deeper program that is based on the work of the Daring Way, that is over at yourkickasslife.com slash coaching. And it's about six months long. It's really in-depth. You and me get to know each other very intimately with this particular package. I also have another package that is more open session. So that is if maybe you struggle specifically around the inner critic or you know that you need to set boundaries with some people at your, in your life. That one is just yourkickasslife.com slash open to read more about that. And then if you're a coach and you are stuck in your coaching business or you are brand new to the industry, don't even know where to start, we do consulting. So you can head on over to yourkickasslife.com slash consulting to read exactly about what we do. We can help you with a book proposal. We can help you start a podcast. We can help you really with anything that you need. We customize those packages because no two businesses and coaches are in the exact same spot. And so you fill out an application, tell us exactly where you're at, and we will help you from there. And also, if you missed it just a few days ago, I put out a podcast episode. It was a bonus episode that was specifically for coaches. That was episode 335, where I go over nine or 10 different sort of tips or best practices for your coaching business. So again, if you would like some consulting, head over to yourkickasslife.com slash consulting. All right. All right. So today's guest is a woman who we've been, you know, circling each other in these same parts of town for many, many years. And I finally was like, I need to have you on the show. So Kara is here. And if you have never heard of her before, let me tell you a little bit about her. Kara Alwell Leba is a New York City based creative entrepreneur who encourages women to live their most effervescent lives, celebrate themselves every day, and make their happiness a priority. She is a best selling personal development author, mentor to women entrepreneurs, and creator of the Champagne Diet blog. Kara is the author of nine best selling books, including the worldwide sensation Girl Code, that have inspired women around the world to step into their power and fulfill their potential. Kara's books have been translated into multiple languages, and her message continues to transcend cultures and break barriers for women across the globe. So without further ado, here is Kara. <laughs> Kara, thank you so much for finally being here. Thank you, Andrea. I am so excited to chat with you. I act like I invited you years ago and you just have been blowing me off, but that's not the case. <laughs> Divine timing. Actually, actually, one of my people over on Patreon said, I follow Kara and you have to have her on her show. And I was like, I do. I haven't had her on. And so I'm so glad to finally meet you and connect with you and have you on because you and I have so much similar messaging and I love having other experts on who talk about similar things that I do because there's always a new spin. There's always a new perspective or tool or strategy and you have a new book out now, don't you? Yes. I just released it November 11th. So it came out 11, 11. Oh, how fun. And how many books is this for you now? This is number nine. If you include two of my workbooks. So I've, I've been writing for a long time. I've been busy. <laughs> been a little busy. You have. You've been very busy. And this one is girl on fire and it's so fantastic. And I cannot wait. I'm going to dive in because there's a lot of different topics that I wanted to run through with you. And, and what I have decided to do is it's so awesome in this book. Kara has the Girl on Fire Manifesto, which who doesn't love a good manifesto? I they excite me to no end because I love because they are almost like a um almost like a rally cry, don't you think? Yeah. And I wanted something that would be really easy for people to reference throughout the book, or if they like picked it up again, you know, three months later, they could just kind of have a refresher that was quick and to the point and reminded them of like the themes that I kind of wrote about. So it was important for me to have that and to to give people something because I think we're busy, right? Like we don't have time to sure. always sit down and read a book cover to cover, even though this one's a pretty quick read. But I love just sort of the Cliff Notes version of what's important. And that was something that was important to me to create as part of this experience. Okay. So I'm just going to whip, we're just going to whip through the Girl on Fire Manifesto. And I would love in this, if you share any experiences or stories or anecdotes that you might have either from your life or a client's mm -hmm. life that brought you to realize why this is so important. So the very first one is you say she chooses herself. Yes. Yes. That is like the guiding star throughout the whole book, really. So it was no accident that it was first? No, it was no accident. And I would have named the book Choose Yourself. James Altucher has a book called that. So we had to 
Damn we'll it, play James. With the title a little bit, but girl and fireworks. Um, choosing yourself has just been a theme throughout my life and my career. You know, I started out as a rejected self-published author years ago. I tried to get a book deal. I had always had a dream of writing a book. I started with a blog to build my platform, and this was like right around the time self-publishing was becoming an option for people. And I was sort of paying mm-hmm. attention to that world. I had one eye on that. I was reading a lot of Seth Godin, who was talking about you know the industry changing and how important it is to choose yourself, how we don't need gatekeepers. But I was still chasing this dream that I had to be a published author, and I wanted that traditional experience. But I was rejected 19 times by 19 publishers. I didn't even know 19 publishers existed, but apparently they did, and they all <laughs> said no to me. So... So did you just go out agentless no. and say like, hey, I have this no, manuscript? No, I had an agent. I did. I had a really great agent. And okay. I actually had multiple offers from different agents. So I thought, you know, because that's the, the route that you, you know, go. That's the, how you get the doors yeah. open for you. And I had a lot of interest. So I thought for sure oh, this book is going to take off. I thought I was going to have my Carrie Bradshaw moment, you know, like sex signing my book deal. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And it didn't go that way. And it was a moment for me where I really had to take a step back and ask myself, am I going to allow these random people that don't know me, that don't know my potential, that have no idea what I'm capable of, am I going to let them determine my path or am I going to choose myself and crown myself an author and decide to move forward anyway and take a chance and self-publish? And that's what I did. So Choose Yourself is really just about understanding that you have everything within you to be successful and to live your dreams and you don't need the permission or the approval of others to do it. Okay. Of course, I already need to stop and ask you questions <laughs> because I, I'm thinking about the people listening and it's a fantastic sentiment. And of course, I'm over here like fist pumping, like, yeah, get them. How did you get to that point though, where you, because a lot of people I think would just throw in the towel and be like, these are the experts. I'm going to go back to my other job, corporate or, or whatever it is. So was it sort of, because when I talk about my experience in that, it was part delusional confidence. Like I didn't, I didn't know what I didn't know. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And and part of it was like an intuitional thing. And so what did it look like for you to be like, were you doing other personal development work in the world? Like how? Yeah. So how. I was doing my own work for sure. Like I mentioned to you earlier, The Secret was the first personal development book I ever read. Gotta love The yeah, Secret. And, you know, yeah. it was almost how I always lived my life without realizing it. Like when you talk about the delusional confidence, I think that's important because I really lived when I was younger. You know, I had a zine when I was like a music fanzine when I was 16 years old and I would call record labels and ask for interviews and I would get them. You know, I was interviewing huge bands uh-huh. and getting press passes to concerts. I always had this this like passion to make things happen. And I, I think the biggest thing for me was just not really caring what anybody else thought. Really? Okay. So it didn't occur to you that these people might it laugh did. and like hang it up It totally you. did, but I just didn't care. Like my passion was stronger. And I tell that to everybody, like when you have passion, you cannot fail. And to me, a dream that is not realized is worse than a dream that was rejected or, you know, that somehow got messed up or didn't work out as planned. So I just, I, it, there was just something in me that had to make it happen. It was like a voice that just would not shut up in my head. And that was like, just do this. Mm-hmm. And when I look back on that first book, I mean, it's so funny. I even redesigned the cover recently and it's like, I giggle, right? Because my writing style was so different. This is like, you know, 10 years ago, but I'm proud that I did it. And I'm proud that I put myself out there so I could see the journey and I could, I can look back now and I can look at everything and go, wow, I really grew from that that point. But I think if you never get mm-hmm. started and you never try, you never know where you're going to go. You don't know what you're, what you're capable of. So it was a lot of believing and really understanding that we do create our own destiny and we can create our life's path. And it's up to us to take that inspired action. And you know that's like the piece of manifesting that yeah. I think a lot of people get confused about. It's not just wishing for something to happen. It's actually showing up and doing it and putting out that first draft of the book with the mm-hmm. cheesy cover and you know the typos or whatever it is. And I, I think it's pretty good with the typos. I was a little I was a little psycho with that. I was very on it, <laughs> but but it's you know it's a first book. It's, it's everybody's first draft. You know, if you're, there's a quote, and I don't know who said it, but if you're not embarrassed by your first draft, you've started too late. And I just I love that. So I think yeah, right. I just I, I had to do that, it. And I'm so grateful that I did. And I'm sure I'll look back in ten years from now and look at what I'm doing now and, and wish that I could somehow <laughs> have gone back and changed things. But that's it is what it is. Yeah, a huge learning lesson. Okay, thank you for for going a little bit deeper on that one. The next 
P. I don't know if they're numbered or not, but number I'll, I'll number them as long as I can remember where I'm at. Number two is she is her own permission slip and she needs no approval. Yeah. I mean that to me, I'll give you a little story about that. When I was, you know, building my career, I was building my writing career and, you know, three books in and, you know, a couple of years of life coaching under my belt. I was working still a full-time job. I was at MTV in a corporate setting, getting promoted, doing all the things, building this little side hustle. And the time came where I had to make the decision to leave my job at MTV. And it was really scary. And I remember like polling everybody around me. You know, I don't know if you've ever been there, but like you're making a decision. You're like, I need everybody's approval. I need everyone on board. Right? Oh yeah. I was just, I was just interviewing somebody else and we were talking about this, like, like kind of ignoring your intuition and just getting the counsel of all yeah. the people. Yeah. And for me, I mean, the biggest person that I needed on board was my mom because I was really close to her and I trusted her and you know, I was raised by a single mother and she worked in the union and she raised my brother and I on her own. And she put herself through college when she was 40. So looking at her coming from a very understandably fear-based mindset, she was like, don't leave your job. You have a 401k, you have health insurance, Mm -hmm. don't go, you can't go. And that was a big turning point for me. I had to become my own permission slip and I had to trust my gut. And I had to know that I was making the right choice, even if she was terrified, even if she, she was supportive, of course, but I knew she had no idea what was going to happen. So yeah, Deep we down. have those opportunities yeah. every day to to do things without the approval of others, even if it's something small. You know, I know a lot of women especially are afraid to make a decision about something because they don't want to hurt someone or even just like cutting bangs. Right. right. You know, it's Which like- <laughs> I've done and I regretted it immediately, but that's fine. <laughs> Maybe bangs isn't the best choice. Getting a haircut is yes, yeah, it's getting a haircut, right? We've all I'm still growing my hair back from 2014. Uh, <laughs> Why you do it? And I think that's how you empower yourself, you know, in big and small ways, just, just doing it. And you gain so much confidence, right? When you make that first decision on your own, you're like, yes, I did this. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I want to just tag on to that and say, I, I think that one of the first steps in this is for people to, well, it doesn't have to be the first step, but I think it can be helpful. If you realize how much you actually are seeking the approval of other people, because I think many times we don't even realize it. I do think that my listeners are, they're pretty good and self-aware around this, it's, you know, especially when it gets more specific around mm-hmm. people pleasing. But I, I, that's my invitation to people is, is where, and that's something that I've needed to work on. I think it was a handful of years ago. I declared to my closest friends and colleagues that I was going to try to step back from seeking their counsel. And these were people that I love and trusted, but so many times I would get like a gut feeling to do something, to make some decision, to take some kind of action. And then I would question myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm someone that has done the work. And so it be, I realized that it had become such a habit. It, at, at the very least, it was just a habit. So I asked myself the question, like, what would happen if I just took action on so many of these sort of decisions that come just as a download instead of first seeking. Cause that's really what I was doing is I was seeking the approval of yeah, other people. And I think you know when you're doing it. Like I know for me when I'm when I'm looking for approval, even though I really want something, there's just this general sense of unease that I have. And it's like it's just mm-hmm. I don't feel in lines. I feel like there's there's this resistance and it's almost always because I feel like I need everybody on board. And it's like, no, just do what makes you happy. Because if you strip all that away, you can really go internally and ask yourself, like, does this feel good? And I think we always know when something feels good. It's the moment that we start to look around and look at people's reactions and responses and start pulling them and serving them, that's when things start to feel funky. So if you can just kind of spend mm-hmm. as much time as you can with yourself, I think that's like the best way to sort of get to the answer that you need. Well, what do you mean by that? Say more about that. Like, are you talking like meditation or walking just being in nature? with yourself, you know, like alone time, taking a walk. You know, I'm not the best meditator. I really don't meditate. Honestly, I know that's like so taboo to say in our world, but I just don't do it. But I meditate mm-hmm. in other ways. I work out, you know, I spend, you know, 45 mm-hmm. minutes in the gym, like four or five days a week with my music on. That's my time. That's when my best ideas come to me. That's when my answers come to me. Uh, sometimes it's just taking a walk around New York City. I live in the East Village, so we have tons of street art and cool stores and things to look at and stimulate me that kind of like, you know, spark something inside of me that that help take me closer to the, you know, the place that I need to be. So I think it's just, it's really dependent on what you respond to and everybody's different, yeah. but being alone, I think is one of the best gifts that you can give yourself, you know, as even if it's 15 minutes a day. <laughs>
Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug-and-play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. It's hard to find a great mentor who can help me level up. My dream mentor, Shonda Rhimes. So I was really excited when I heard she has a class on Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best. Masterclass is the only streaming platform where you can learn and grow with over 200 plus of the world's best. For just $10 a month, an annual membership with Masterclass gets you unlimited access to every instructor. And you can access Masterclass on your phone, computer, smart TV, or even in audio mode. I'm always looking for ways to be a better writer, so I took Shonda Rhimes' screenwriting class. It helped me gain concrete technical advice, including structuring, the writing process, and with shows under her belt like Grey's Anatomy and Bridgerton, it was so helpful. Plus, every new membership comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't wait another moment to start your learning journey with Masterclass. Right now, our listeners get an additional 15% off any annual membership at masterclass.com slash Andrea. That's 15% off at masterclass.com slash Andrea. Masterclass.com slash Andrea. I was just about to say that, like, because I know there's people like, oh, I'm so busy. I have kids and job and partner and all this stuff. And that's what I say to clients is like, it doesn't have to look like anyone else's. You know, I'm not talking about three hours a day. It can just be 15 minutes. What I started to do, this a couple of years ago, I started getting up even just a half an hour before my kids so that I could have that yeah, alone time. Exactly. Taking a bath, you know, even in the shower, like if that's all that you have, mm-hmm. just be in tune, you know, and pay attention, try to try to, you know, get some clarity rather than just letting your thoughts sort of run wild, you know, just sort of focus in and, and think about whatever it is that's on your mind and allow yourself, allow whatever thoughts to come. It, it is much like meditation, right? Like allow the thoughts to come in without judgment And I think that's Mm -hmm. the way that you sort of get there, you know, without tuning everything else out, right? But being allowed, being allowing yourself to really think about what it is that you want openly and honestly. Yeah. And paying Mm -hmm. attention and yes, all those things. I love that. Thank you for, for giving us some clarity on that. The next one, number three is she views rejection as redirection. Oh, this is one of my favorites. And again, this, this goes back to like my journey with publishing having those 19 rejections redirected me to choose myself and to move forward and to give myself that experience, you know, whether or not I was supported by a publisher. And that was a huge lesson for me. And that was an opportunity, I think, for, rejection is an opportunity for all of us to look at ourselves and say, how am I going to handle this? Am I going to shut down? Mm-hmm. Am I going to get defensive? Am I going to feel shame? Am I going to you know, be hard on myself? Or am I going to step up? Am I going to learn from this? Am I going to grow? I think within every no, there's an opportunity for us to really learn and to evolve. So I had to kind of look at my situation and say, all right, what are the things I want to do moving forward? How do I want to show up? How do I want to write this book? What can I learn from this experience? And it put me in the best place possible. I wound up writing three, my fourth book called is a book called Girl Code. And that book actually wound up getting picked up by a publisher and they did another book with me. And we'll, I mean, we'll dig into all that later on because it wasn't the fairy tale that it sounds like. It did lead me to a place where <laughs> I learned that I was I could create that success for myself with or without them. Mm-hmm. I love that you knew that, well, I'm, I'm making up that maybe it was a long time. The lesson came later, but I, I think that a lot of people just end up quitting when they get 19 rejections, whether it's dating or trying to get a promotion or, or whatever it is, or, you know, up level their job or anything really. And I love that 
either, you know, whether you knew that in the moment or it took you a minute that it was almost as if the way I'm looking at it is they weren't the right run f- one for me. Like that was not the direction that I needed to take because I think that s- many times we can make up that our journey needs to look a certain way in order for it to be quote unquote successful. Maybe it's the journey that your parents took or that you have mapped out for you. Cause I don't know about you, but I had my entire, this is embarrassing. I had my life bullet pointed out by season at one point. This is in like my former marriage. And like, I was going to get pregnant, right? You know, during this season, and then we we're going to have a baby and then I was going to graduate and then I was going to go to grad. Like, <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> and when that went sideways, I was like a massive rejection. I was like, oh my God, this isn't how I planned things out. And well, what was happening was the universe was like, this isn't the universe was like, that's hilarious <laughs> that you thought that that's how your life was going to be. So it's, it's, I say all that because maybe look for where you are you've made up a story that success only looks a certain way. Like if I do this, then I will be happy. Yeah, and successful exactly. And, and it allows you to, to realize that like you're in control of that definition of success. It's, it's not up to anybody else. And you have an opportunity to really write your own script and write your own future. And, you know, I, you mentioned like the bullet points and then sort of having to let go. My word of the year is allow because I think I try to control everything as well. Like I feel mm-hmm. like, well, if I just do this, like that. this can happen. Or what if this happens? And, you know, we try to manipulate outcomes and control things. In reality, there's a lot we can do, but there's also a lot that's just going to happen. And I think when you realize that like, you know, mm-hmm. life is happening for you rather than to you, it puts you in a very different mindset and a much more healthy mindset. How do you, that makes me curious, how do you define success for yourself? And two-part question, has that changed for you like since you started a decade ago? Um, It's definitely changed for me because I've realized it's less and less about the things and the accomplishments and it's more about the way that I feel. So for me, you know, success means waking up every day, number one, first and foremost, and doing what I love to do, like feeling fulfilled on like a deep, deep level and being happy with the work that I'm doing. Uh, It also means having the financial freedom to do the work that I want to do at whatever that looks like, whether that's traveling, whether that's being able to, you know, donate money to people who need it, whether that's able to offer like lower cost coaching options to like people and really scale my business and touch as many people as possible. Like that financial piece I think is huge and not in the, you know, I used to think I want to make you know a ton of money and I want to fly in a private jet and I want to have this big house. And Mm -hmm. I've changed that. This is so much of my financial goals are really just around being able to be free so that I can reach more and more people. And that was a big shift for me. I think for a lot of us, right? We, we attach ourselves to these things. You know, if I do this, then I'll get that. I remember for the longest time, I was like, I want to be a New York Times bestseller. And that's really one of the only reasons I even signed a book deal because I thought they could get me that. And this you know, oh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I mean, oh, to laugh yeah, so hard. Believe me, I was like, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, once I realized that wasn't happening, <laughs> this was just two years ago. So, like, we have these, we're attached to these things. And I understand why that didn't happen for me because, again, the rejection was a redirection to understand that that really was just bullshit anyway. And it didn't mean anything. So, you know, it's a process. And I think that we, we get clearer and clearer on it, like the more work we do and the more that we evolve. But, Mm -hmm. you know, allowing yourself again to go inside and to realize like what's important to you. What's important to me is going to look different to you, right? Your version of success is different than mine and different than everybody listening. A hundred percent. Because I get that question sometimes. People ask me some version of something about success. And, And it's interesting because I never... And I don't know about you, but like I never dreamed I would be here, like where I am right now. And so it's it's completely flipped upside down my version of success. But I think early on for me it was it was about and and because I have kids too, it's it's morphed a lot into like, am I being a good human being as a role model for these other humans that are like watching me and paying attention to how I speak to other people and how I speak to my about myself and all of these like things that we don't realize when we don't have kids how impactful they are on the world I think without yeah. getting too philosophical like that's been a lot of my version of success is just like what kind of impact am I making on the world and I was listening to this podcast with Rain Wilson was the guest Dwight from the office 
Oh, and he's, wow. okay. I, he was talking about this religion that he's a part of called like the Baha'i people, which I've never even heard of. And he's talking about the way that they, the, the beliefs that they have. And I was like, that's exactly how I feel. Like, it's just about be, what kind of person. And I know that's a lot of like Christianity and like so many religions, but the specific things that he was saying. Anyway, I'll put that link in the no, show. No, I notes. feel the same mm-hmm. way though. I mean, I don't, I don't have kids, but that's how I feel like in the way I show up every day. I mean, I have like a lot of eyes yeah. on me. You know, and I, I'm really conscious of that, of everything. I mean, just down to the way that I treat the person in Starbucks, sure, you know, like that I'm ordering a drink from. Like I have a huge responsibility, I think, to myself and to the world to show up and to lead by example. So I think that's something for all of us to think about. You know, there's so much happening in this political climate and the world's just crazy right now. And I think the best thing we can all do is just be the best version of ourselves. Like that's where it mm-hmm. begins. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think we all have bad days too. Like, I don't know about you, but I have like this, this fear of this is like deep, like core fear must come from childhood of disappointing people. And Mm -hmm. do you feel that way too? Right. Okay. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I think I'm like, just somebody going to catch me on a bad day and, oh, I know. Well, get you giving yourself grace yeah. is important. And I've learned that too, because I have bad days. And like I said, I live in New York City and it is very easy to, you know, like snap at someone. It's a very high stress environment to be in. And I've had my moments, believe me. I'm like, I had one on the bus a couple of weeks ago. Like this woman was just pushing my buttons and pushing my buttons. And she was obviously like not totally stable. And she pushed me to the point where I snapped yeah. at her. And I, <laughs> I thought like, oh my God, if one of my girls, like one of my clients, readers, whatever was on this bus and saw that, that's like, that's not who I yeah. am. And I had to have a, a moment with myself where I was like, okay, yes, that is not who you are, but also like forgive yourself because you are a human being. And you know, you, you were having a stressful day and you're like, you're, you're not going to do that every single day. And didn't like, you know, punch the woman in the face, thank God. But I <laughs> lost YouTube, my temper yeah. a little bit, but that's <laughs> normal. Like, yeah, right. I know. I was like, I'm going viral, <laughs> but that's normal. And I think we all have those moments, but it, can you learn from that and be better the next time? I think that's the question to ask yourself in those for situations. Sure. Yeah. Can you learn from it and be better the next time? For sure. All right. Number mm-hmm. four is, and this is probably one of my favorites. She speaks kindly to herself and optimistically about her dreams. I love that you put those two together because those could have been separate. Yeah. Well, they're together for a reason, right? Because if you don't speak kindly to yourself and if you are you know, somebody who speaks negatively and puts yourself down, then there's no way that you're going to think anything's possible for yourself, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. This is never going to happen for me. So I think like, it starts with really learning to be kinder to yourself, like tying it back to that example on the bus, right? Giving yourself grace, forgiving yourself, um, you know, kind of pumping yourself up every day and reminding yourself of what you've done so far. You know, I see, I have this thing and I'll share it with anyone who's listening. And this might be helpful for you. I have this thing at night that I do and I advise all my girls to do and it's creating a celebration mm-hmm. list. So when you think about the morning when you wake up, you make a to-do list. Maybe you make one every day. Maybe you make one once a week. And what that is, is basically a laundry list of all the things left for you to do and to accomplish and to make happen. But we rarely take time at night to look back, even if it's every night, even if it's once a week, to look back and say, what did I do? what have I accomplished this week? What did I get done today? And oftentimes we have gotten done so much more than we're giving ourselves credit for. So doing that at night with, you know, a glass of wine, a cup of tea, like light a candle, take five minutes for yourself and just make a list. And it could be anything, right? Maybe it's just getting the apartment together. Maybe it's keeping the kids, you know, together. Maybe it was, you know, coming up with a great idea for your next project. But really doing that, I think, sets the tone for the next day and helps you move forward with this positive momentum as opposed to going, oh, these are all the things that I didn't mm-hmm. do. You know, so those just small examples of really like celebrating yourself and, and what you've done. I think as women, especially, we do not give ourselves enough credit. And once we learn to do that, I mean, we've just become unstoppable. Can you imagine if we put in as much effort to even just acknowledge what we have done versus thinking about what we haven't done, like how much that would change our brains? Yeah. Totally. I do that at the end of every mm-hmm. year. Like rather like the, before I even think about what I want to ha- what I want to happen in the next year, I celebrate everything that I did. I make a list. So if anyone's listening right now, it's the top of the year. Like think about 2019, like write down yeah. your wins, you know, before you start thinking about what you want to do this year, write down everything that you did accomplish that you're proud of. And I think that just, it just kind of helps you create like a different vibe, a different energy. moving. I forward. asked people a few weeks ago on Instagram to 
comment about like looking at the last decade, what was something that you thought was going to break you in the moment that ended up shaping you in one way or another over the last decade? And I love that. I think it, it makes people, and I, this is like what I wrote about this in my last book, like same about getting, I think the subhead was getting intimate with your accomplishments or something like that and, and making a list of, of all of the things that you've accomplished. And I give examples of, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be these grandiose things. Like I started a nonprofit in Africa and built a school, like I cured cancer. Like <laughs> it doesn't have to be these gigantic things. Like maybe you, you know, maybe you graduated from college or maybe you asked for a promotion at work, even though you didn't get it. It's like these things that we sort of poo poo. And I think, I think this is a gender thing too. I think women do this more than, than men do that. We don't think that they're good enough to make the list or like, well, everybody can do that. Oh, I had, I had a baby, but like, I mean, anybody can do that. You know, it's like, no, no, this is like a really big deal. So what are the big deals that you think are small deals that you can acknowledge? Yeah. I think it's so important to do that. And I love the way that you phrase that question. Like, what did you think would break you that made you stronger? There's a Steve Job quotes that I love. And he says, you can't connect the dots looking forward, Mm -hmm. but you can connect them looking back. And I mean, that quote just drives me every single day because whenever you look back, you always see that whatever happened was supposed to happen. You know, And even if it doesn't make sense in the moment, even if you don't understand it, even if you felt really crappy what was going on, you most often you can look back, especially if you're working on being more self-aware and you're putting the work in and you're like, oh, now that makes sense. That actually made me stronger. I mean, I think, I don't know about you, but I'm at a point now when, when the challenges come and when the tough times come, I'm grateful. I'm like, yeah. yes, I'm, I'm leveling up right now. Like I'm evolving. Like I'm going to be so much better when I get through to the other side mm-hmm. of this. I remember the first time I thought that and I thought to my, this was like several years ago and I thought to myself, okay, now I'm definitely a personal development junkie that I am actually like a little <laughs> bit excited that I have like hit an edge. Yeah. Yeah. Like bring it on. Let's do this. <laughs> yes. There's hope for everybody. Okay. I, I want to spend just one more minute on this because can you give us, especially around thinking optimistically about your dreams and, and you write a little bit more about this. You said, you know, she creates a mental environment of positivity and hope. So can you say more about that? Yeah. I mean, you can talk yourself into or out of anything, Mm -hmm. right? You can have an idea and you can think about it and you can create what I call like, you know, the, the good movie in your head and you can imagine it all happening and you can visualize it and you can set yourself up for success. And in the same breath, you can think of all the scary stories and the bad things that can happen and the bad ending to the movie. And you can talk yourself out of something before you even start it. So the power really is in your mind. I know it's so cliche, but I mean, it's just the truth. So I think allowing yourself to get lost in those positive thoughts and to really just kind of like dwell in possibility, Mm -hmm. as Oprah would say, you know, like just imagine, like fantasize about it. I don't think we give ourselves enough room to fantasize. And that's something I love to do. And of course it has to be followed up with the action, but just giving yourself time to like daydream and just picture what's the best case scenario. That's like one of my favorite things to do. What is the best thing that can happen? Mm-hmm. Right. Cause we always default to like, worst case. the worst mm-hmm. that's going to happen. I'm prepare myself for the worst. And no, like if you start preparing yourself for the best thing, I think you'll find that more often than not, the best thing actually does happen. I love that. Reminds me of in 2012, I had like my first official life coach. And when I say official life coach, it was like, cause before that had been like bartering or, you know, people like graduating from coaching school, like it was a lot of money and I had a lot invested in this. And one of the, she gave me so many great exercises, but one of, one of them was called the what if up game. I think that's what she called it. It's Gina Gambolini, by the mm-hmm. way. I'll, I'll link to her in the show notes. And she, it was kind of like what you were saying. So she, because I was saying, well, what if this? And what if that, like all the worst case stuff. And and so she, her assignment to me was, it, it's what if, but it's always an, uh, it's always going up. Like what if you get a book deal and it's a six figure deal? What if you get asked to be on the Today Show? So it was all of these big things. And I, I keep journals from forever. It's, and I don't keep a whole lot of things, but for some reason I've kept this. And I looked at it recently and I was like, oh my God. It, so yeah, it's been seven years since that, but all of that is happening now. So it doesn't necessarily mean if you do all of that, like best case scenario, it might not happen within the next like three months, but I'm telling you, stay patient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stay patient and stay persistent. Yeah. And, and I think there's so much power in speaking your dreams out loud be careful who you speak yes. them to. Like on on words, you know, ear, as my my friend Amy likes to say, like ears that can hear them. 
Yes. Yes. Because people want to help. You know, I think people genuinely do want to help you. And if you don't talk about what you want, nobody can step in and open a door for you or give you a word of advice that changes your life or introduce you to someone. So it's so important to surround yourself with people. Even if, you know, when I first start and really still to this day, like a lot of my industry friends and peers and people that are supportive of me, I met them in Facebook Mm -hmm. groups. Like pretty much everybody we met, we used to always be in Facebook groups for like other life coaches and entrepreneurs. And I met some of my, you know, best friends in this industry online. So it's not always going to be your best friend from childhood or your mom or, you know, your partner. Like a lot of times you have to actively seek out those people, those friendships. And I think that's why I love building communities because I love to bring people together, you know, who can, people you do feel like are safe to tell these things to, and that, you know, can support you. I I feel the same way. I have a lot of women from my group programs who have remained friends. I love getting tagged on Facebook when they meet up like a year later. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yes, it's, it's so awesome. Feeling. It's it's like-minded spirits because I t- totally understand that. I mean, I live in rural North Carolina. Like there's, I can understand people who live in a place where not everybody is reading personal development or listening to podcasts. You know, they're, they're a little bit different than you are and it can feel lonely and isolating. So I do, this is one of the reasons I love the internet is to connect people with like-minded spirits. Yes, me too. I mean, I even, I live in New York City and yes, people probably here are listening to podcasts and reading all the books, but it's also a very isolating place Mm -hmm. to be because people are so busy. You know, I don't have any like industry friends in New York, believe it or not. So I depend on my friends that live in other places and we, you know, voice message each other and we stay connected however we can. It's just, you really have to cultivate that environment for yourself. And it takes time. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. Like sometimes you meet people and you just don't click with them or connect with them or it takes longer, but I think if you if you just make that a priority for yourself, it really yes. Okay, things. I want to get through a handful more of these, and everybody needs to go out and buy all nine of your books. <laughs> At least, <laughs> curl on fire. Today's podcast is sponsored by Midi Health. Ladies, are you over 40 like me and dealing with hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, some vaginal dryness, or weight gain? Don't just accept it as part of aging. These symptoms are often linked to hormonal changes during perimenopause and menopause. At Midi Health, they get it. Their experts know what you're going through and how to help. Midi clinicians are menopause specialists offering safe, effective, FDA-approved solutions. And guess what? Midi Care is covered by insurance. So stop pushing through it alone. Schedule a virtual visit and dive deep into your unique symptoms and health background. You'll walk away feeling heard and with a plan to start feeling better. Visit Midi Health today and reclaim your well-being. You deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Joinmidi.com. You know, when you're listening to a song on the radio and you get the profound feeling that the song playing was written about you. Now imagine having the power to gift that same incredible feeling to someone you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and lasts forever. Whether your song is for Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, wedding, or anniversary, or even just a gift to show your loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in one of Songfinch's top artists. I gifted Songfinch to myself, a song about my late father, and I'm so excited to play you a clip. Flipping through the slides of learning how to live and how to love And coming undone a father-daughters without So she writes it down One of my clients heard about Songfinch from this podcast, and so she had a song created for her son who is graduating, and she told me that they both cried when she played it for him and that it exceeded her expectations. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash noise and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash noise. Don't forget to share your song with us too. songfinch.com slash noise. (laughs) 
<laughs> but let's talk about uh, a girl on fire. She knows failure is a possibility, but she does it anyway. Oof. Right. I've learned to kind of love failures. I love talking about my failures. I think that's much more interesting to a talk about percent. than my success. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you what, you know, got screwed up or what didn't happen or what, how I, you know, flopped about something. I think that's like, those are the teachable moments and that's where we really grow. And if you're not willing to fail, well then you just don't deserve the success. You know, you have to go through it. You have to put yourself through it. It's, it's an earned thing, you know? And I think it's, we all deserve to be wildly successful and happy and have these amazing lives, but there's some, you know, you have to, you got to put yourself out there first. And I think if you expect everything to be perfect, mm-hmm. you're never going to take a step forward. I, I love that you so, say too, I want to throw this yeah. in because it's so good is that you said she values experience over winning. 100% winning when it happens too quickly. I'm like, oh. That was boring. <laughs> that happened mm-hmm. way too fast. Like, again, like being like that, you know, like you said, the personal development junkie and wanting, you know, wanting the challenge and the grit. I think the grit is so much more exciting than the glamour. I always say that, you know, like I love the moments and yes, I want things to go well and I want to impact a lot of lives and I want to be successful, but I also want the, I love the journey. Like I live for it. I live for rebuilding success. When I sold my book, Girl Code, I was doing really, really well. Penguin Random House came along. They made me a multi six figure offer that I couldn't refuse. They bought Girl Code from me. They bought those rights. And I did another book with them called Like She Owns the Place. And that wound up being the most de- probably depressing year of my entire career because here I was, you know, had accomplished this dream that I wanted so badly or I thought I wanted. And it was a complete letdown for me. And the published traditional publishing model is it's very, as I'm sure you know, it's very different. It's a little antiquated. It takes time. I didn't have a good experience and I'm open about that. And I was open with them about that. I mean, this is not a shock to them. Like I just, Mm -hmm. I, it didn't work for me. So that year was very hard. It was rough. I was, you know, I was just, it didn't feel good. So when it came time to do Girl on Fire, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, maybe I'm just done. Maybe I don't need to write anymore. Maybe I've said all that there is to say. And I had this moment where I was like, no, you need to tell this story. You need to talk about what it looks like to get back up after a failure or after something that you know doesn't work out the way that you had planned. And there's I mean, no pun intended, but there's so much fire behind these pages because I chose myself again and I went back out there and I self-published. And I mean, if like when Girl Code was the book for me, the book that was, I mean, within the first year of self-publishing, I sold like 50,000 copies on my own. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm never... That's a a lot even for traditional publishing. Yeah. The traditionally published book, if you sell 10,000 copies in a lifetime, like they're happy, you know, that's good Mm -hmm. to them. So the fact that I had done that, it, it was so empowering, but it was also scared the shit out of me because I was like, well, what if I can't do this again? Yeah. And you know, I knew I didn't have to do it again, but I wanted to do it again. I wanted to do more and I wanted to prove that to myself. And I mean, this new book has only been out a few months, but like historically it's done better than girl code month over month and it's taking off. And it's that to me is like, that's like mastery, right? Over yourself and over your career, like being able to like top your own success, not anybody else's, right? Like not comparing myself to anyone else, but to be able to rebuild something on your own. I mean, I think it's probably one of the hardest things to do, but when you can do that, then you have this new sense of confidence. You're like, well, I can do anything now, right? Like I'm not a one hit wonder. It wasn't one thing that put me on the map and that went away. Like it's, it's, I can keep doing this. It's the powers within me. It's, it's not in anyone else's hands. A hundred percent. Yeah. I love that. That's probably like my favorite soapbox that you've got on this whole time. <laughs> well, because you know, because you've been in this industry for over a decade like I have. It's a long-term yeah. game, you know? And I, I see a lot of newer coaches who are experiencing a ton of success and it's happening fast for some of them. And I'm, I think that's great, but I want them to also know like, okay, what's, you know, things ebb and flow, right? Like it's not to say we expect disappointment, but like things ebb and flow. So you have to set yourself up you know, in a positive mental environment to understand that with the failure comes the good and the success. And it's, it just, it, it's a long game. (laughs) So prepare yourself for that. It's a long, and it's a long mental game more than anything. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, that's, that's really what it is at the core. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, people ask me all the time for advice about, about this particular industry and more specifically in business. And I, I tell them I wrap it up and or first I'm like, okay, pay me. Second, empowering women <laughs> means paying them too. That's my favorite mantra that I, I always say. Wait, say that again. Empowering women means paying them too. 
Oh my God. Amen. Okay. And what I say is the only thing I really could tell you like in a nutshell is that you have got to work on yourself. Like it is, I could give you all the strategy in the world and it's really only about 20% of it. Mm -hmm. If you aren't working on your shit, then, cause like you want, you want a workshop in personal development, go start a business. I don't care if it's a life coaching business, just really any, that's going to bring out all of your skeletons, all of your childhood trauma. Like, oh yeah. All of it's going to come out to play. Oh yeah. So if you aren't actively working on all of these things that we're talking about from your girl on fire manifesto, then you are going to be on the struggle bus. I completely agree. I completely agree. And it really takes a strong woman to do it, but you only get stronger through the process. So like stick with it. You know, it it makes me so sad when I see so many women just dropping off. They're like, oh, I hit a a wall, a roadblock. I don't want to do it anymore. And I'm like, no, like the only difference between the women that you read about in books and see on stages and listen to on podcasts is that they started with, they started sooner than you and they stuck with it. That's it. So start Mm -hmm. now and stay with it and you will achieve the same success. Like it's just inevitable. It 100% is the long game. Yeah, exactly. That's if I could go back and tell my, you know, 2009, 2010 self that, that's what I would say. Just, and not that I quit at all, but just that would have, that would have alleviated a lot of the mental suffering. Right. (laughs) Right. It's going to be fine. (laughs) All right. I'm going to skip a few of them just for sake of time. So everyone needs to go out and grab a copy of Girl on Fire, but I'm going to, it's the very last one. And you say she doesn't want to play quote unquote the game. Yes. Oh, that's a big one. And again, like, you know, my story with publishing, that was, I mean, I all of a sudden now was in a situation where I was playing the game and I was being asked to do things I didn't want to do and, you know, agree to things that didn't feel right for me. And that was an opportunity for me to step up and say, no, not really. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to pass on that. That doesn't align with my brand. That's not what I believe in. That doesn't feel good to me. So I think anyone that's listening right now, whether you're in a corporate job or you're an entrepreneur or you're just in a college, you're trying to figure it out. Staying true to yourself is so important. And it sounds so cliche, but it is really like the most important thing that you can do for yourself to stand out and to more importantly, to feel good in your choices. So Mm -hmm. playing the game, it's just, it's not sustainable. It's people can see right through it. And, you know, having the courage of your convictions, having the courage to put yourself out there in a way that is true to you, I think is really the only way to do life and to do business. Like I can't imagine, you know, ever saying yes to anything that I don't want to do. And I have in the past and it's never worked out Mm -hmm. for me. It's always felt gross, you know, it's, <laughs> or it's exploded in your face, yeah. like one or the other. Yeah. It's just, it's not, it has not worked. So, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you, if anyone listening, please, if you take anything away from this, it, let that be the one thing, right? I love that you brought that. That's the one that you picked because, you know, it's, it is a game in many ways. And a lot of people are trying to get ahead quickly and they're trying the shortcuts and they're trying to, you know, figure it out. And it's just, that's not how it goes. So be honest with yourself, be true to yourself and have the courage of your convictions. Thank you. What a fantastic note to end on. And so tell everyone where is the best place to find you? Okay. So um, I'm on Instagram every day at the champagne diet. So you can find me there if you want to hang out in the social setting. I also have a podcast called Style Your Mind. And Andrea, we're going to have to have you on the podcast next because I feel like we need a part two. Uh, And you can get all of my books on Amazon. So Girl on Fire, Girl Code. I've written nine so you can go have at it, play around in there, see what speaks to you, what resonates with you. But I think Girl on Fire is probably the one book that I would love everyone to read this year. Yeah. We'll throw the link to like your author profile on Amazon where like all your books show up as well as specifically the Girl on Fire book because I think everyone needs to get a copy of that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And everyone knows, you know what I say it every time, I appreciate and value your time so much. And I am incredibly grateful that you choose to spend it here with me and my guests. And until next time, everyone, I will see you all out in cyberspace. Bye-bye.
I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts.